Dragon, and today I will be showing you how to make this simple isometric theater. So let's get straight into it. So first, while you have this cube, scale it by 10 meters, both in the Y axis and in the X axis. And then on the Z axis, scale it by 0.2 meters. And now you have a flat looking plane. But if you wanted a even smaller plane, then you could scale it down another 0.5 meters. And then personally, I think that looks better. Now we can go into edit mode on this plane and select the face select and select two of these faces on the sides of the plane. Then we can hit P and when we hit P, this will separate it into a different object. And then when we go into edit mode on that newly created object that we had, we can select another face and extrude it 0.5 meters. Then we can do the same thing to the other face. We can then select one of the corner faces and extrude it 0.5 meters and then going shift Z and selecting all the vertexes in that little corner. And then you can hit M and hit by distance, which will remove the vertexes that were overlapping. We can then select all the top faces and extrude it 15 meters. Now you can go into object mode and then add a cube. When you add this cube, just make sure that you scale it along the Y and X axis so that the X axis is longer than the Y axis. Other than that, it doesn't really matter how much you get it because they will be customized stairs depending on how you do it. Then you can move the cube along the side of the plane and then scale it down to 0.4 meters. So now you can move it up 0.4 meters along the Z axis and move it along the Y axis a little bit so that you can create some stairs. Now you can go into edit mode, select the face and extrude it about the length of your rectangle. Now just keep doing this until you get to the end of your plane and you can speed this up by going shift R. So shift R is just going to duplicate the step that you just barely did. So a very handy shortcut. When you get to the end, you can hit A to select your entire object and then go hit seven for top view. And then you can move it along the Y axis a little bit until it's no longer hanging off the edge of your plane. And now we can select the second face along this rectangle. Then we can hold control and select the very end and then extrude it 0.4 meters because this is how tall we had made this in the first place. So now we have our first stair. And now we just repeat this process by collect, uh, selecting one in and then extruding 0.4 meters. And unfortunately the shift R feature won't really work for this one because it's not the exact same action. But now I'll speed this up and I'll show you what it should look like at the end. Here is what it looks like. The reason that I'm not extruding the last three is because typically in a real life theater there is a little bit of room before the chairs. Now what I'm doing is selecting three faces at a time, leaving uh, three faces as a gap as well. The reason I'm doing this is because I you need some room for the chairs to sit on and then for a little walkway for people to walk by. So that is why in a real theater you typically have a stair that leads onto the pathway. So that is exactly what I'm doing here. So that was basically my outline and then I select all the faces inside that outline. The only faces that I don't select are the ones that you could see those three faces as a gap but then as you could see I did select some unnecessary faces so so I go into wireframe view and hold control and drag and then those faces are no, no longer selected now with the faces that I do have selected I can extrude them to the wall on the other side and now that we've done this we now have basic stairs for the movie theater and now all we need to do before we move on to the chairs is cut out a little area so that we have a little bit of height and a little wall in between the chairs and each walkway. To do this, we can then add a loop cut and cut it so it's a little bit smaller, both here and along the steps. Now we can go along and select the faces and leave a gap in between the last one and here. So I'll speed that up so you can see what that looks like. So with these faces ex selected, we can then extrude it up a little bit, and now you can see we have those walls like you can see in some movie theaters. 
But now let's quickly model a TV by adding a plane, and rotating it 90 degrees, and putting it next to the face where the chairs will be facing. Then you can scale it to what you think a movie theater TV would look like. Then after that's done, we can add some thickness to it by just extruding it outward a little bit. And then we can hit the I button to inset it a little bit. And then after that, we can move it outward and then it will have like a bump. Then we can inset it again and extrude it inward so that it has kind of a TV-ish look. Now we can finally make some chairs. So to do this, go shift A to add a cube. Then we can move it up along the Z axis to position it in the right place. Now in edit mode, we can add a loop cut and move it to a little bit over on the one side. Then we can select vertex mode by and then selecting those vertexes and cutting it in half, basically. And then you can select these ones again. And once you have these four vertexes selected, you can hit F and fill it. Now you have a basic armrest that we need to use the array modifier to duplicate it. But before we add the array modifier, let's add a little bit of bevel by adding the bevel modifier. Then we can increase the segments of the bevel modifier up to around 3 and increase the amount basically to 0.16 meters. And then once we have that, we can shade it smooth and move it, uh, position it a little bit better now. And that includes moving it to on the x-axis so that we can use the array modifier a little bit easier and it's easier to work with. And now we can finally add the array modifier by going into modifiers and adding array. Then we can change the settings a little bit to make this so that it actually looks good. To do this, we can then go into the array modifier and change the relative offset. By changing the relative offset, we can see a distance between what we think an armrest and a chair would be. So basically the armrest of the chair. And then we can increase the count up until we get to the very end of the other wall. And once we get to the end of the wall, if it's not really touching the wall, then we can again change the offset a little bit and hold shift for a smoother transition or just, if you're lucky, it will auto already be what you want. Then we can move this downward so that it's on the very bottom step. The reason that we move it downward is so that we can apply the current array modifier and then add another array modifier to make it go upward. Or if you didn't want to, you don't even have to apply the modifier at all. But before we get there, we first have to make the chair part that the person would actually sit on. So let's add a cube to make this happen. So the first thing to do with this cube is position it in the right place. So here is how I decide to position it. You can pretty much do however you want, but now I'll go into edit mode and add a loop cut. By adding a loop cut, this will be the backrest or the area that the person will lean on when I extrude it upward, so like right now. Now that it's extruded upward, it actually looks like a basic chair. But one issue with it is that the chair is intersecting with the wall and that doesn't look particularly that great. So I'll just move it inward so that it's no longer intersecting with the wall. Now that that's fixed, it looks a little better. But now just for a few more adjustments, you can move it upward a little bit higher or just change it how you like it. And then once we do that, we can then move the chair along the side of the wall or in between the side of the wall and the armrest. And then we can use the array modifier again and the bevel modifier. And of course, shade it smooth. So here is a sped up version so that you could see how the array modifier turned out with these chairs. So now that I'm happy with how everything is looking, I'm just going to apply the modifier or array modifier. But if I were you, I probably wouldn't. The only reason I'm doing it is because I like the look of everything combined, though that's probably not the best way to go. So now that that is done, I can add another array modifier and make it go upward. So changing the relative offset, instead of going on the X axis, changing that to zero and changing the Y axis and the Z axis. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can put the chairs in each floor simpler than duplicating it over and over. So that is why I am using the array modifier. So here's a sped up of both the armrest and the chair being put into place. 
so now that we have those chairs and they're looking good, we have one final piece of modeling, which is a simple lamp to put on the side, which you typically see in movie theaters on the side of the walls, which I think is definitely a touch that I think would be worth adding because then we can add in the materials an emission shader, which will make it light up a little bit, which looks pretty cool. So let's add it by going Shift A, add a cube, and then let's move it up so that we can see it. Or you can hit forward slash if you want to block it into isolated view, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to move it upward so I can see it better and position it where I'm going to want this little lamp. So to model this lamp, all I'm going to do is add a couple loop cuts to it and then extrude it, both the bottom and the top, and then just push it into the wall a little bit so that you can't see the intersecting bit as much. So now because I want three of these, I'm going to use the array modifier and do exactly the same thing I did for the chairs, which was change the relative offset on the Z and Y axis. Now the modeling for this theater is all done. We just need to texture it and add a camera so that we can actually render it. So let's do the camera first. Now that we have the camera, let's clear the rotation by going into the sidebar property and selecting zero. Now the camera will, should be facing downward. Now let's add the location and the rotation, the correct ones. And so for the location, originally I was going to do 20 and negative 20. 20 was the X and negative 20 was the Y. But then I found out I actually needed 40 and negative 40 and the Z axis was still around 10, give or take a little. And then for the rotation, the Z axis was rotated 45 degrees the, and the X axis was 75 degrees. That is what I found worked good for my scene. I just wanted, the most important thing that I found was that you have a good isometric view of your theater or room or whatever you're doing. Now the, the camera's in place, let's add some textures. So let's start with the wall that the theater or screen is on. For this, I simply did black. For the other wall, I basically just got brick texture and plugged the brick texture into the base color, and then I changed the color on the brick texture to what I found looked good. Then I duplicated the brick texture and added a bump node and plugged the brick texture into the bump and plugged the bump into the normal of the base principal BSDF. Now to the movie. So for this one, I added a basic black texture for the rim and made it a little bit less rough so it was a little bit more shiny. And then for the movie part, I just went in and did, took away the principal BSDF and replaced it with an emission shader and plugged that into the main one, the output node, and then also put an image texture. The image texture is just the image that I found of spring. You've probably seen it, seems how you're doing Blender, but that's what I decided to put on it. And then I also added a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. The reason I did this is because then you can scale it, move it around a little bit, and it makes it a little bit nicer to control your image. Then I moved on to the little light bulbs. So for the little light bulbs, all I did was make the basic texture just a black and then added an emission shader for the parts of that kind of stuck out of the light bulb. I also increased the strength of the emission shader and changed the color of the emission shader. And now moving on to the chairs, the stairs, and the little armrests. I did, these ones were all different shades of black. So they weren't the same ones. What I mean by different shades is that they were all black, but the roughness was tweaked a little bit, or the just the color, the brightness of the black was tweaked a little. So that's what I did for this one. But now for the final texture, the floor. For the floor, all I did was change the texture to more of a red color, and then I added a wave texture, and with the wave texture, I just changed the distortion. And that basically did it for all the textures other than the last one, which was adding a plane and then adding a black texture to it. 
And to wrap up this whole scene, all I did was add a couple more lights and increase the radius and increase the strength and change the color a little bit. And then replicated these lights onto some other areas. Well, I hope you found this useful and learned something, and here is the final render. This was my first ever time doing a tutorial where I actually made something and showed you how to make something, so feedback would be great. Any tips on an improvement would also be great. Well, that basically does it for me today. I'll hopefully see you in the next one, and bye!